What's up everyone and welcome to Lowered Expectations. Thanks for lowering your expectations and hanging out with me here. I do appreciate it. In my last video, I installed a Viver diesel heater in my work vehicle. And in this video, we are gonna test out the heater and I'm gonna show you guys just how awesome the app is. The main focus of this video is going to be the operation of the app. And so the rest of this video is going to be a screen recording with me doing some talking in the background. Before we get into the video, if you guys are interested in picking up a heater for yourself, there will be an affiliate link in the description below as well as a discount code. Stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to talk about some things that I didn't know at the time of this recording and just some tips and stuff like that. So let's get into it. I was quite concerned that I would be too stupid to be able to figure out the controls or the app, but not only was the app very easy to use, it was also very easy to download. I scanned the barcode that was in the owner's manual and it brought me right to the app store. There was no troubles downloading, no troubles connecting to the heater. Everything went smoothly and I am very happy with the app. I've seen that there are a few bad reviews on it. It actually only has, I think, like two and a half stars or something like that. And when I was reading through the reviews, it was saying that people wanted more features on it. And I think that must be before, they must have updated it because the app is pretty extraordinary, I would say. I'm gonna open it up here on my phone right now for you guys and show you what I'm talking about. Click on the app and it automatically connected. It is now connected via Bluetooth. You can see in the top right corner, it says scan now. So that was, if I had two heaters, I could scan a different one, but that's also what you'd do if you weren't connected. The heater is currently on standby. It doesn't read your elevation or voltage or temperatures and stuff if uh, it's not, uh, turned on. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm actually going to power it on by pressing and holding the uh, power button at the bottom and holding it. And it says, start it says start heating on the controller in the truck. And it says ignition on the screen here, as you guys can see. So it takes a couple of minutes to fire up, and while it is firing up, you guys will no notice that the voltage drop is quite significant. The battery isn't great in my truck, and it actually draws quite a bit of amperage for the glow plug as it's starting. But then once it's actually up into operation, you guys will see that that voltage will jump back up again. Uh, the buttons on this are all very straightforward. Everything I have seen in here is very understandable and, uh, yeah, very straightforward. We have the, across the top, we have the elevation and is saying that I'm at 1,008 meters right now. It's saying that it's 24 Celsius inside of my truck. It's calling it a house. The speaker thing, I'm not sure what that's about. It's something that you can change in the settings. And that is, it looks like the only setting. So we'll go to setup just so I can show you guys what that's about. You've got English. So I guess you can change the language. Password, not sure where you want one of those. I guess so somebody else can't access your heater and turn it on. Uh, and then there is speaker switch. So yeah, I don't know what that's all about. Anyway, we'll get back out of that. And then we can move on. We move down to where it says minimum and maximum. And <clears throat> you can see just under that battery voltage, 10.8 volts. That's my current battery voltage because the glow plug is drawing a, quite a bit of amperage. And I can hear the fuel pump has just started, so it should fire up pretty soon. The body of the heater is at 17 degrees. That's what the temperature is in the middle, just under run level. And just under max is what I have the heater set to. So we have a couple of different options for setting the heat. Uh, on the left-hand side, you see a thing that looks like kind of like recycle and it says mode. If we click on that, you can see it's changing from smart mode to level mode. And smart mode just seems to be the way that you would want to do it unless you were trying to heat, say, a greenhouse or something and you just wanted to make sure that you had fuel for say 14 hours anyway I leave it on smart mode but you can switch it to level mode level mode will allow you to simply increase the heat level you can see it's going up to uh, 
I'm, I've got it all the way up to red there and then I'll go down to uh, one yellow or one orange, whatever you wanna call that. But now I'm just gonna switch it over to smart mode and what with smart mode does, when you put it up and down, it actually sets the temperature. So I currently have it set to 30 degrees and you can see it updates just under where it says max, it now says 30 degrees Celsius. It is still going through the ignition or uh, ignition process. So the voltage, oh, the voltage has just started to climb. So the glow plug has turned off and uh, we will see that voltage climb back up. There it goes up to 12 or 12.1 volts. Again, my battery isn't that great. Uh, we've already gone over the mode button. We've got the setup button, which we've also gone over. And then we have our heat up and down or level up and down. And that's all there is to the app. It tells you everything that you would wanna know. Everything's very easy to understand, very well laid out. So uh, yeah, I would rate this uh, five out of five. There are a couple things maybe that I would like different. I would like for it I would like to have the choice to be able to stay connected even when the heater's not on. So when I turn the heater off, I can't see the elevation or battery voltage or a couple other things. But uh, right now, we'll go back to the heater and talk about it a little bit more. You can see my battery voltage went back up to 12 volts. The heater body temperature or the heat exchanger temperature is going up. It is at 140 Celsius and uh, the temperature inside my vehicle is still 24 celsius set at 30 so it is currently uh, the run level i've got one orange bar there and depending on how much heat i'm demanding or depending on the temperature differential so if it was zero degrees celsius in here and i was demanding for it to be 30 that run level would go up considerably but because it's only six degrees in the difference, it's only running at setting four, basically. There's four bars there uh, to get the temperature up. And again, you can see the temperature is, or the battery voltage rather, is fluctuating between 12 and 12.2. And again, that is because it draws very little amperage once the uh, heater is actually in operation we lost one bar on the run level and the reason for that is we are getting closer to our target temperature and so the heater doesn't need to try as hard to get to that target temperature again the bigger the temperature differential between what you're asking for and what the actual temperature is in the space that you're trying to heat the higher the, the run level will be so just to demonstrate that, I will crank the heat all the way up to 36 and we'll see the run level actually go up. So we're currently, I'm demanding it to be 36. It says heating now and we will see the uh, run level will go up. There it's gone up six bars. Well, it went up three bars for a total of six. And the battery voltage will drop a little bit because as the fan turns faster, it's going to demand more amperage. So anyway, I just thought that was interesting. I don't actually want it to be 36 in here. Uh, so I'm going to turn it back down to 30 and we'll continue on with the test. You guys can now see the temperature went up to 27 inside of my truck and the run level has lowered down to two bars. So it is actually quite clever. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't wait until you're actually at the temperature and then all of a sudden go into panic mode and shut itself off. It, uh, it's quite smart. It knows, it knows that as it gets closer to that temperature, it doesn't take as much heat to, uh, to get there, so. The heater is down to two bars now. This does mean that it does take a little bit longer to heat up. Um, if I were trying to heat up my vehicle really quickly, what I would probably do is switch it over to the, uh, yeah, I would probably switch it over to level mode and then uh, crank it up a little bit until I got to the temperature that I wanted but uh, smart mode works really well. You don't need to monitor it that way. It's not gonna get scorching hot inside of your vehicle. Um, and it will, 
use a lot less fuel this way because it's uh, use a lot less fuel and use a lot less battery voltage because it is currently slowing the pump down and slowing the fan down. So it's burning less fuel and using a lot less uh, battery power. So that's actually pretty cool. I am really excited to test this when we get a bunch of snow and when it gets really cold. Uh, I'm probably going to spend a whole bunch of time just sitting in my truck melting snow off of it and enjoying the heat because our Canadian winters can be pretty harsh and I think this is just going to be way more fun than it ever should be. Uh, it is a very practical thing for heating your vehicle up, but also it is just going to be quite entertaining to be able to sit here in minus 30 Celsius weather with a nice toasty truck. There you have it folks, we are at 29 degrees Celsius inside of my truck and it has lowered all the way down to run level 1 when I set it in smart mode. So it realizes that it doesn't have to run the heater with a lot of fuel and with high fan speed. So it has slowed everything down. I think this is a pretty good demonstration of how this works, how the app itself works and how the heater works and how easy it is to use. The app, in my opinion, is pretty outstanding as far as app, apps go. It does exactly what it's supposed to do. It's not hard to understand or to use. And so I am going to power this off right now and go in the house and get some sleep. Push and hold the power button. Stop heating. It says stop heating in the truck. Goes to standby. It'll go through a cool down cycle. As it goes through the cool down cycle, it will turn the glow plug back on to burn any fuel off that is on it. And you will see the battery voltage drop. Once it is finished going through this cycle, the battery voltage will go back up as the uh, glow plug turns off. The glow plug has now turned off. The heater is at about 170 Celsius, the body, and I can hear the fan speeding back up to cool it off. I'm not sure what the exchanger temperature drops to before it actually uh, shuts off completely but we'll uh, leave the screen recording run and see where it actually shuts the whole thing off. Thanks for using. I wish you a safe journey. Alright, I think think the battery voltage was at 12.3 and the temperature on the heat exchanger dropped all the way down to 95 and then it turned completely off. So you can see now the elevation is gone, the battery voltage went to zero and we're still showing temperatures but I'm not sure if those are accurate. I kind of suspect that it might just stay at 29 until we reconnect and power it up and then it will tell us whatever the temperature is at that time. So let's find out. Oh, would you look at there? We are actually connected. It dropped to 28 Celsius. Very cool, that's good to know. So when I wake up in the morning, I can turn the app on, connect to the heater by Bluetooth, and see what the temperature actually is inside of my truck. And if it's not an unreasonable temperature, then I can choose not to turn the heater on. Or if it's really cold, I can choose to turn the heater on and warm it up. Very cool. That's going to do it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, remember to leave a thumbs up on the video. And if you want to see more of this nonsense, be sure to subscribe. The one little tip or thing that I learned about this heater along the way is that Heating such a small space, you can have an overheat uh, situation in the heater. Now that's nothing to worry about. The heater is doing exactly what it's supposed to do. But uh, I did force the heater to go into overheat mode or th thermal shutdown a couple of times. I actually contacted Viver about it, worried, and then I kind of realized exactly what was happening. 
Those of you who watched my videos from last winter will know that I used one of these heaters to heat my garage and it was actually able to keep it fairly warm in here. My garage is 26 feet by 24 feet. It is fully insulated, but it is still a lot more area or volume to heat than a cab of a truck. So what was happening when I first fired the heater up, I set it on level mode instead of smart mode. I would absolutely recommend in a small space that you set it on smart mode because that way the heater <clears throat> can automatically adjust to the temperature and not just blast at uh, full temperature into the cab. So what I did that was the big mistake was I was used to using my heater in the garage and I can basically just run it on full heat all the time. So what I did as soon as I fired it up, I set the setting up to like, I don't know, setting eight, setting seven or seven, setting seven or setting eight, that's hard to say. And the heater ran for a few minutes and then it went into thermal shutdown. There's a safety on the heater, the body of the heater. And if it gets over a certain temperature, it just shuts down the, uh, yeah, the fuel stops running, it uh, runs through a cool down mode and basically protects itself from overheating and either damaging itself or damaging other stuff that it's connected to or surrounding. So the heater wasn't doing anything wrong. It was me that was doing something wrong, but I have a little bit of experience with these heaters. So I thought I would pass that information along to you guys because I can definitely see it's being uh, something that happens to other people. If you're using this to heat a cab of a truck or a car, uh, you're way better off to use smart mode because if you just crank the heat setting up to like seven or eight, it's probably going to cause so much heat inside the cab and inside of the heater body itself that it's gonna shut down. Anyway, that's pretty much all I have for you guys, except that it does stay connected. Uh, you can connect to the heater with your app at any time as long as you're within range and you can read the temperature inside of your vehicle and so that way you can decide whether or not you want to turn the heater on and i think that is really cool the intro to this video was shot with me sitting inside of my garage and i was able to connect to the heater with my phone there is a yard my house and then my front yard sitting between me and my truck so I think that's pretty impressive. I actually had to try twice to get it to connect and I couldn't figure out for a few seconds why that was that it didn't connect instantly because I'm used to this thing just working flawlessly. Anyway, that is gonna do it for this one. I'm starting to yammer now. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, there is an affiliate link in the description below if you wanna pick up one of these heaters. There is also a link to my other channel and Patreon. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, feel free to check it out. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.